hey there. I wanted to take some time and just say hello. I'm glad to be back in conversation with you. Uh, we're going to be able to play today, and we get a chance to play a bit with Tamara. And what we're going to be doing here is really just taking some time uh, to really just be in a place of service, to slow in, to slow down into this and, and make this truly a life-changing conversation. But before we get started here, Tamara, it's great to be able to talk to you. It's good to see you today. How are you doing? I'm good. It's good to see you as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Are you open to this being a life-changing conversation? Absolutely. Every conversation we have is. That really is that really is uh, the case here. And I think that's I, I love that here because I was thinking, I'm like, how do we, how, how do we want to get started with today's conversation? And I think it really brings me down to what the the central theme, plan, and strategy of this year is for me. What, what I would love to do is look at like how can we get to a place of just being simple, to be able to take all the complexities out of out of our typical approaches and get to a place that is in, that is incredibly simple and use that in a way to continue to build for ourselves financially, build for ourselves in terms of our impact and also in terms of our influence. Mm -hmm. I was talking to someone, um, my, the, my, my one goal for the year is to have 10,000 or is to, is to organize 10,000 life-changing conversations. That's, that's my one goal of the year. And I know that if, if, from a very simple perspective, if that is accomplished, everything else that I need for the year will be, will be taken care of. It'll lead to more clients. It'll lead to me having the impact that I'm looking for. It'll lead to me actually influencing people uh, in a way that, that is meaningful, right? Uh, the thing about this that's really fun for me is I actually have a video, I have an audio clip of when that idea first came to mind. And I was walking down, uh, walking down the path in Singapore and I was like, I just need to have conversations. I should have like a thousand conversations. And I remember that feeling of having that thousand, of saying a thousand conversations. And I was just like, yeah, I could do that. Like I could have a thousand conversations. That's what, three three conversations a day. Like if you like actually just plan it out there, I'm like, I can actually, I can see how to have a thousand conversations. I'm like, but what would be awesome? 10,000. And like, as soon as I said that, my like I like stopped walking because like it almost like broke a circuit in my mind. I was like, <laughs> It's like, wait, hold on, 10,000 conversations in a year? Like, how would that happen? And I took like four or five more steps. And then I realized, I'm like, oh, it's not about me having 10,000 conversations. It's about organizing 10,000 conversations and being being the person that then lets that be the guiding, uh, the guiding element of them. Well, I came up with that in the end of November. Now we're at like the first half of January when this is being recorded. And... You know, I want to come out here and say, oh, totally nailed it. We have 100 conversations we have th like already on the calendar, so on and so forth. But realistically, it's taken a while to get this off the ground. There have actually been a number of different conversations that have taken place. I'm, I'm starting to track them as well. But what I found was that while the intention was there, it actually took a, it took a while before I actually had the courage to invite people into an actual life-changing conversation. We would have conversations, and like you say, when you walk into a conversation with me, I like I refuse to have anything less than that. But there was, there was a disproportionate amount of the of the, the conversations and discussions and experiences that I was creating that were simply social, that had a life changing element that didn't really actually lean into what the actual purpose of that intention was, and I recognized along the way that that. Someone called out, like, what was missing? What was missing was setting that intentionality. And why it wasn't there was because, if, like, honestly, I, I was like, well, if I reach out to someone and I say, you want to have a life changing conversation with me out of the blue, uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm going to get, I'm going to get um, knocked, knocked back. But then I realized that, like, that's entirely what's keeping me from doing this. And that's actually where, the, where being courageous would change everything for me. So that we're entering into conversations that that have um, that are generative, that are in alignment with what I'm looking for, and actually put us in the place where we're having conversations where people could become clients or could lead to clients. Doesn't need to, but at least but we're at least down that path, or we can actually have an impact versus a, a nice conversation, right? So 
I'm, I'm, I want to be honest about this path along the way that, I, that I'm in. I'm, I'm in the place of finding more courage along the way to go, to reach out further, reach out more, uh, and to, to state exactly what it is that I'm looking for, to create the types of containers that will actually lead to the, the type of life and business and impact that I'm looking at, looking for overall. I want to bring that into our conversation. This, and, and the idea here is around what is the, for your intentions for this year, for what it is that you, that you truly want to get done. If it was simple, what's the, what's the courageous act that you would need to take or the courageous person you would need to be in order for that to just move forward? So I'd love to start us out there with that here. We don't need to stay on this, but I'd like to just check out for you. Tell, tell me a little bit here for now. If you look at this year, all right, give me, give me a sense here for the goals that you have. What's like the courageous act or the courageous practice that, you would, that, that could shift it all for you? Yeah, and it's, it's something that actually, so I mean, there's all the usual goals of like make a certain amount of revenue and all that sort of stuff, but one thing I decided towards the end of last year, so I think it was, it was literally about five weeks ago. And I'd been thinking about this. So I'm living in Japan at the moment. And with my coaching business, my focus is on serving tall poppies. So those that have grown taller than others in some way, they stand out from the rest and they're cut down for it. Um, because I had that experience when I was younger and like what drives me is I don't want anyone to ever have to feel that way. And I was kind of initially looking overseas for like clients and people I could serve. And then I took a closer look at Japan and realized that I'm surrounded by tall poppies here. And not only that, but every single thing in this country, like the, the culture, the people, your family and friends, the people closest to you, work environment, everything is designed to cut you down, to keep you in a safe, a safe space. And it is a safety thing which is a group kind of like group bubble, I guess. Yeah. So you, you do this, you follow this path and that's, that's the safe way to do things. So what I decided towards the end of last year, and I've been thinking about it for a while was there's not really any support systems here to help Japanese people that want to step out of that safe box and try something different or who have lived and worked abroad for a period of time and then come back to Japan and are feeling disconnected from their own culture and their own circles because they've got that different mindset and those different experiences. So I thought about creating something that can tie the best of both worlds together. So some of the strengths of the Japanese traditions and, and culture with that global mindset, putting it together to really unlock like there's a mass, massive potential in this country and in the people here. And the more I started talking to Japanese people and talking to other people around the country that were doing similar kind of um, initiatives, I guess, I realized that there is a real need for this. And that's basically kind of my goal for this year is, is to create what one person I spoke to is uh, coined it the, the tall poppy movement in Japan. And when he said that, something in me like clicked of like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, and then a second later, something was like, shit, are you going to lead this? Like, <laughs> you're going like, to lead a movement or something here? So, yeah, the moment I like this only happened about five weeks ago and it was looking really promising that with COVID starting to die down, we could start to do live events again and we could start to bring people in um, because the one of the things with the Japanese culture is that face-to-face -to, -face to build trust is really important. Um, and kind of the traditional things like we do in Western culture of like opening up and talking about our dreams and goals, it's, it's quite difficult here. It's not, not something that's common practice here. So having that, that in-person to build trust and creating that safe space in person is really important. And now coronavirus has kicked up again. <laughs> so it's kind of, again, putting things on hold, which is... So for me, it's like I have this real drive to want to create this community and start running these events and start getting this off the ground and start helping people and start making this spread. Um, but yeah, there's there's a few blockers coming up. So yeah. Let's play with that. Let's play with yeah. that. I think um I think I as you're saying this year, I found myself even just like 
slowing down just a little bit here. Um, we can play with the blockers. We can play with all this. I see, I see the vision. I see you bringing things to life. I see that you're, you're, you're having a conversation and seeing, seeing how you can make an impact uh, where you are. Right? Given some of that and keeping the door open here, if you and I were going to have a conversation today that would change your life, an actual life-changing conversation, what would we need to talk about? Yeah. The immediate things that's coming up, and it's something I've been thinking about the last couple of weeks particularly, is... I don't know if it's quite fear or if it's just feelings of the kind of unworthiness to achieve that, to have that success. And it's not thoughts because in my mind, I'm like, yes, I can do this. I have the skills. I have the knowledge. I have the connections. I'm building more connections every day to make this happen. But there's some little piece of me inside that, and it's probably the tall poppy to be honest, <laughs> that is holding back. And that's holding me back from a lot of other things, I think, both personally and professionally. So it's, it's yeah, how do I, hmm, I don't even know if that's the right question. Yeah, there's a, there's a part of me that kind of fears being the one leading, but is also excited by that. And there's also a part of me that because I've always been the one that's been great at lifting others up and great at putting others in the spotlight. Um, and what's, there's something else there as well. Great at. Yeah. Great at getting success for others. Great at congratulating others, I guess, celebrating others that yeah it doesn't really feel like I'm the one to ever get that even though I've had moments of success in my career there's there's still a part of me that's like you know yeah it's it's difficult to describe but there's there's some level of either fear or unworthiness of of being that one who's out in front even though I have been in the past for different things but yeah you say that it, it, the word recognition comes to mind. Let me just check in with you real quick. When I say that word recognition, what do you feel either within your body? Like, like, and my and my attempt here is, yeah, to like let's let's bypass the brain as much as possible. I want yeah. to see like like what, like what are you feeling when you say that? When I say that, yeah, recognition recognition is definitely something that drives me. Mm -hmm. I think it's more, yeah, this is what it is. It's. Because I can feel it. <laughs> I, I heard it's, a certainty in your voice. Yeah, got yeah. It. It's it's the fear of going for this, giving that hope to all of these people I want to help, and failing, and letting mm. them down. Mm. Yeah, that that I can feel. Yeah. So it's, so it's that fear of going for it, giving yeah. them the hope, and then yeah. letting them down. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of like, because to do this, I'm going to need help. I'm going to need support. I'm going to need to bring people together and things like that. So it's, it's kind of akin to, I guess, like being the coach of the football team and failing the team. Got you. Can yeah. I just get a sense for you? Cause I want to like see if I can understand your world a bit here. Like when you say failing, like letting them down or failing the team here, yeah. how, like, how does that, how would that come to life? Like, how would you know? If, if, if that was the case, what would that look like? I think if the, the people that became part of this community, if they don't feel this value in it, they feel like it's a waste of time or money. Um, particularly in Japan, if it becomes something that has like a stigma or negativity attached to it, because um, perception is is a big thing in Japan. Um, mm. 
There's something around like not getting the numbers, so therefore it not being profitable and being able to continue, even if it is something of value for people. But that that's kind of a minimized one, I think, because even just in the first few weeks of talking to people, I can see the potential there of like once people get involved. Yeah. So there's a, there's a bit of it that I feel like the long the thing I'm hearing is like the, the sustainability. Will you be able to sustain it? Will you be able yeah. to you know, sustainability? Um, I'm hearing a bit of effectiveness, like, okay, yeah. like if I, if I do this, will it, will it lead to anything? Will it, will yeah. it be, effective? will it be, and like, and maybe it's, it's in the value creation. Will it create value for yeah. them? Will they and also them? actually also trusting the wrong people. Tell me more about that. So, so yeah, one thing that's come up for me recently is, is particularly in personal relationships, a little bit of fear of, or not fear, a little bit of distrust in my own intuition sometimes. So I'm kind of working on building that at the moment. Um, but yeah, partnering with someone that, that I trust as a, like as a partner or as a you know, value provider or something as part of this community and then being wrong and having them blow it up in some way or having that decision to trust them being at the core of why it falls apart. Yeah. Okay. So, the, so there's, there's a trust and a trust in partnerships, trust and trust uh, that, that element that also comes in yeah. uh, and, and that being the decision of choosing that being part of what actually blows up the entire thing. Yeah, because if it's just me doing everything, which is obviously impossible, <laughs> I can trust myself. I know my motivations. I know why I'm doing this and I know what I can create. Um, but as soon as you start bringing other people in, there's that risk factor. Yeah, as you say this, it makes me think like like trust feels really important as one of the, like, you're talking about being able to create value or add value here. I think about the values uh, and I can see trust being a really important part of the community values overall, like something that, yeah. that uh, especially when you talk about like a potential stigma being associated with this here, uh, I'm imagining like, uh, based on what you're saying, based on uh, the culture of what you're saying, like, like what it would take for someone to choose to bring out their pop tall poppiness in, yeah. that, in the, in the, in a culture where not everyone has gone through tall poppy, yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, for some it's going to be really difficult. Yeah. 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 And yeah, like even even my personal values, like my personal deal breakers in any relationship or partnership, is trust, honesty, respect, communication. But particularly that trust and honesty is such a, a big one for me. Yeah. So we're in this here, that if we talked about and like really got, gave you a chance to, well, I, I'm pulling out like. This is there's something that this is something you're really excited about. You've called out, and I want to just acknowledge you for the, the fears that you feel are playing out, like kind of, uh, kind of uh, that might keep you from bringing this out to the to the fruition that, that you wanted to. You talked about profitability. You talked about sustainability. You talked about adding value. You talked about like the stigmas as well. You talked about trust, mm -hmm. trust in yourself, trust in your decisions. Out here. I think that's the, yeah, that's the big one for me. Yeah. Yeah. Because as the leader, everyone's trusting me. Tell me more. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, that's just the, that's the thing that's sticking in my mind is, is if I step into, and this could be anyone, I guess, in any leadership role, when you step into that, everyone is trusting you to lead, trusting you to make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's ultimately, in any leadership role, it's ultimately you who would fail that trust. So how can I support you when it comes to trust here? Like as, as we continue down here, I'm going to make sure that, that we're finding the thing that will actually keep moving. There's a lot here that we've talked about that like at any other point we could have jumped in and like had a brainstorm, had anything around it. But there's, there's, if, if we're getting into places that go beneath the surface, I want to make sure that we're actually spending time there. Um, 
how can I support you when it comes to, to that trust in, in, as, as a leader? Tell me, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, it really comes down, for me, I think it really comes down to that trusting my own intuition. Because when I am really in touch with that, like I, I get those immediately flat, those immediate flashes and I know, and I have zero doubt in myself when I know. But it's when that self-doubt creeps in and you start to doubt your intuition because intuition isn't something that's measurable. It's not something that's tangible. You don't know until it, after this decision is made kind of thing. So it's, it's yeah, how do I... How do I tap more into that? How do I trust myself more around that? Yeah, as you say this, what what um what comes up for me is uh, I'm imagining each of the people inside of your community would have something that where trust and intuition uh, and following into the non tangible would mm -hmm. would be an important part of the journey. Yeah. You know, I'm imagining that. Yeah, I'm seeing a, like a world where it's like okay, the, the, how, like being able to be your tall poppy self mm -hmm. out in a world where that's where for the safety of of the culture that's typically not what is what's encouraged yeah and even actually had a couple weeks so we had a focus group last week um and then i had a conversation with another japanese person around it um and two things that came out of those conversations one was that in japan if you do take the risk and you like, like entrepreneurship or something like that you try something different if you fail, there is no going back. Like you are just seen as a failure then. There's no, like in Western culture, we see there's lessons, you've learned something, like that's not the way it's viewed here. And the other side of that, even if you do kind of become successful, if you show that in any way, then that's viewed as like, like kind of like an arrogance thing or something. So that's viewed negatively as well. So there's a, there's a, there's a, a specific it's like a tight rope to walk there's yeah like, there, there's, yeah there's, yeah but it's not it's, it's a fairly fairly narrow space if that's what I'm yeah talking. and actually even as I'm saying that like that brings up for me the tall poppy fears around standing out too much and seeming and being viewed as arrogant yeah that's like that's that's the it's that plays out for me because I cause there's there's this element of like all right in doing what you're doing there's a there's this there's a tall poppy there's a standing out element of it all and if you and and at the same time there's an element of how do you navigate this in a way because yeah. like because there I think and I think this is where I want to like get there's there's real stakes involved in this you know um, and I love being able to explore this a bit here from like as you're building the community here. I think it's important. I think it's important, especially because you're not Japanese, correct? Yeah. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> to like to like to 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 understand what's at stake for you. Yeah. Because there's something at stake for them. Yeah. Right. Um, and and the risks that you take to be a tall poppy are going to be different than the risks that they take, even though it's still in the same the, the like, even though you're still experiencing that, right? Uh, and I think there's a part of me that in this conversation is like looking is is looking up to to see what's the line between removing that risk from you altogether and helping you feel good about all that there, and also just surfacing it so that you can hold that risk and have have a risk that is like that is um how do I say it that allows you to relate to the path that that the, that others are going through. Um, just as a member of, of the community as well. Does that make sense in that regard? Yeah, yeah. And that's that's why I did the focus group. And that's why I want to continue to do focus groups because um, I'm organizing it with a Japanese guy who has done his MBA overseas and come back. Um, and then there's another Japanese woman as well that's helping us. And, and she's similar thing. She lived in Canada for 10 years before she came back to Japan. And one of the things I said to them from the very beginning, I'm like, guys, you need to be my filter here. If this starts to feel like it's getting too, to, too much to the Western side of things, like pull me back, let me know, because I'm not Japanese and, and I want to make sure that this is built around serving Japanese tall poppies. Mm -hmm. So I've got some things in place around that, but yeah, maybe there is still some doubt within myself around that. Yeah. Yeah. I would like, there's an element here, like so. I, I'm not trying to like dredge up the doubt, right? I'm like, if you're good, I'm not trying to, to dredge that up, right? What I am trying to do is look at it and see, as you're building this here, 
it feels like the underlying question that you're asking yourself, what's actually, let me ask you this. If you had to come from your heart, what's the underlying question that's like, that you, that you keep asking yourself around all this? Yeah. Let me just sit with that for a second. Can you ask me one more time? Yeah. What's the underlying question? If you can ask your heart, what's the underlying question that's that's that you're really wrestling with right now? Well, it's it's funny actually. What was what's coming up is what will you do if this works? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What Let's, if this works? Yeah. And I think, I think there's a part of the reason, like, I'm really curious about that um, yeah. because I think, I think there's a, there's a thing here in the conversation we're having. I'm like, I do believe you. I believe every single thing that you're saying. And like, and I'm like, and that's, that's what makes me even more confident. The fact that you're like, do I trust that this will work? Can I, can I trust my intuition? Like that this, this will let, like, there's a part of me that's like, oh, like this is this, the fact that the fact that she's asking herself and she's in that doubt there, like it's actually a beneficial thing for this type of project, given some of what other others might be experiencing as well, right? To yeah. go out and say like, hey, I'm looking around me, is anyone else being a tall poppy as well? You know, like there's, there's a part of you that can understand from a different perspective there. You have partners that you're working with, you have focus groups, you're collecting data. So it's not just based on you, it is based on the people you're serving. So that's, mm -hmm. that all, that all sits there. What would you do if this worked? <laughs> yeah, so I'm always I'm always looking like like ten steps ahead of everything, like like long term visions and things like that of how because I because I want to build it with the potential to get to that. And it's funny, like I'm almost scared to voice this here with you, but I kind of have this vision of like. And I'm hesitant because it's because it, I don't want it to come across as like a like a Westerner trying to change a culture of a country. But I just I have this vision of of basically kind of changing the culture in Japan around tall poppies and around standing out and around being different and around unlocking your potential. And I feel like like you talk to the Japanese people here and they're so disheartened because they're so worried about the future of their country. And yeah, I really feel like something like this, like bringing all these people together and the different organizations and then they would connect and they might set, do another side project and all of the kind of ripple that could come from this could be absolutely life-changing for this country. And it's not even my country, like it's, which is weird, but yeah, I just have this image of one day which seems completely impossible because I've only just started learning Japanese and I know the culture here is very against foreigners, but I have this, this kind of vision and I'm, I'm still terrified to voice this, but this vision of like at some point being at a dinner with the prime minister and having conversations around the good things that have changed in Japan because of this, this movement. How do you feel right now as you, as you put that out into the world? Terrified. <laughs> <laughs> because again like I'm thinking of you know like if a Japanese person saw this like the perception of that like that's too big a goal that's too yet yeah, like how dare you want to change our country like things like that it's yeah I get I get I get the the the, the courage that's involved in it the audacity that that that's in there and yeah. also the intent that's there you know um I, I feel I feel you in, in this year and um and I think I think there's there's I acknowledge you for voicing that which that which feels terrifying right now, All right? Because it's like it's like this this is part of it. This is like where where you see it going. Like, look, 
to how, like to create something with that much value such that you are able to have a conversation sitting with the prime minister about the impacts of this, about the positive impacts of this movement, right? Um, there's a, there, like for me, I, like I get it when you have when you have a vision that's that large and it's and it, and there's consequences and shifts that come along with that. I want to acknowledge you. I want to acknowledge you for having a vision that that's that 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 plays in that place, uh, and for having the courage to to voice it and to and to actually bring that to bring that out, uh, bring that out into the world here. What's going on inside of you right now? Yeah, it's it's mixed. Like one part of me is trying to justify it to myself of like you know all of the the studies that you've, you've seen about Japanese people leaving and the low birth rate and all of these things that are affecting the country negatively. This could help with that. This could help solve those problems. And then another part of me is like, what did you just say? <laughs> like, so it's yeah, mixed, mixed. Yeah, you know, I I want I just really I think that like. I really want to honor you, like in, in the mixedness of that, there, right? Because whether or not that's the the end outcome or not, it's about the it's the place in which it's coming from. Is a place in which, like, like there isn't a, it, it, like, it, like it's not about uh, cultural uh, um, appropriating one culture onto another. It's not about that, right? Um, whether you're having dinner or it ends up being a a conversation or an email or whatever it is, right? It's a, it's, it's what I'm hearing here is that that you're in a place where you care about the culture and the future of the of, of that country, and you're hearing from the from the members of the country that they themselves are, they have desires as well for the growth of their country and what and what happens there, and from what you know, from what you have access to, and for what like where 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 you can make a true contribution, you're like this is the place, this is the way that I can do it, and there feels like there's a need, and and. There, it, the sense that I get is that it's, there's a genuine. It's coming from a place of genuine contribution, right? And so, uh, so I reflect that back here, knowing full well. Like, I mean, I, I like the, what did I just say? I mean, I, I, I live in Singapore, so I also I get like the cultural context, and 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 Singapore even is not is not Japan. So I don't want to say that that they're the same, but I get the impact of culture and how that's bit embedded into everything. I lived in the uh, I lived in the U.S. I understand how the systems are meant to create yeah. people in a certain way, right? So there's a part of this that that like that that has that that has an impact on on that uh, on that kind of a scale. And now seeing where like the universal, like the big picture, the big vision, the thing that like scares you to even put out into the world of saying, I want to, I want to be a part of this change that it feels like the, that, that citizens of this country want to, to, to have. And this is how I can contribute, right? Having, having said that, I get, I get curious about, okay, now we see, now we have it on that large scale, right? Let's bring now, now let's bring it, bring it in, bring it in, dial it in, not dial it back, but if we like, let's bring this to the world in which you influence right now, your circle of influence, the people that are either in the focus groups, the people that are around you and so on and so forth, right? When it comes to, to that world, knowing that, look, here's the thing. I ascribe that this might be a journey over mm -hmm. time, Right. I, I think Absolutely, it's fair, yeah. <laughs> fair to put that out there. As I said, I'm like, I don't this is not going to happen overnight. No, <laughs> it's not overnight change. It's not overnight change. And 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 for a true movement, the the true thing about a movement is that it, it lives beyond you, mm -hmm. right? It lives beyond you. It's it's something that allows others to move as well, right? Mm -hmm. So, from that perspective, I want to bring it down into the world that you're in right here. Uh, because I, I get the brain being able to think 10 steps down, down the path, being able to see and look into and like experience the future uh, and to come up with massive visions that just feel like, like that, that pull us into a new future. I'm glad you have something that pulls you, pulls you forward like that, right? If we bring it now into to your world as it stands right here, we get with what's present here. Mm -hmm. Given... Firstly, do the same fears exist? Do the same like do the same things about trust, uh, adding value, uh, stigma, and all that? Do they like now that we're if we bring it 
bring it down into the world in which you can influence tomorrow or later on today, do those same fears exist? Yeah, a little because because like there's been things kind of similar to this that I've attempted in the past and failed at. Mm -hmm. So it's it's even though even though I got more traction in the first few weeks after I like like put this out into the world with the people I'm working with and they started to bring in other people and then random connections started to happen that are other people that are interested all around the world, not just in Japan. Um, it's almost like, like, as that started to progress, that's when I like, I could feel myself like, like deep within somewhere, put the brakes on of like, shit, shit, shit. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then now like with coronavirus kicking up again, it's like, that's now that's, it feels like I'm maybe using that as an excuse of like, oh, we should put it on hold. But I don't, I really don't want to. <laughs> There's another part of me that really, really doesn't want to. It really but doesn't want to it, it, Or does it yeah. really want to use it as an excuse? Both. Both, yeah. But it's, it's how do I, because again, coming back to that, like having this be designed for Japanese people and respecting that they're a little bit more conservative and afraid of things like coronavirus how do I respect that, but still move this forward in some way? If you were having a conversation with the prime minister and you were talking about the beginnings of this movement and how it started out during COVID-19 and as things were getting you know, as things were moving and developing exactly as they are in this moment, right? So maybe years down the line and you're having a conversation with the prime minister, what would you love to be able to tell him? If he asked, like, how, like, how did you, how did you actually get this off the ground at that time? Yeah, it's something, it's something that kind of feels like, it feels impossible. It feels like it would have to be magic to make this happen. In that would be starting with online events, but with the culture, it is, and it's kind. Of, I'm kind of in two minds about it because, like traditional Japanese people, you need to do it in person for them to really open up and to build that trust. And I understand that because I, I prefer in-person interactions too. But there's another part of me that's like. Well, if you're initially targeting the people that have already got a bit of that global mindset, which is the plan to initially target those people, bring them in and then have it be word of mouth. You bring a friend kind of thing and have it grow that way. Um, because I don't think it's something you can market. You have to experience it and be part of it or be recommended yet. And that's how I want it to grow too. And so another part of me is like, if you're going to be focusing on those people initially, then they might you might be surprised, they might surprise you. They might be more open to doing an online goal setting uh, event, for example. Yeah. You know, what comes to mind right now is, uh, is, is the power of 10. Um, uh, and what the things that, the things that come up as we, as we look, because we've been looking at this in the country level and we're now down like here, the things that come to mind are, okay, can you get one person into a conversation online around this? All right. Could you get one group of 10 one time into a conversation online around this? Can you get 10 groups of 10 to do this over time? You know, and and even just in and with, with the with the idea here of powers of 10 coming together uh along the way. Okay, we got 10 groups of 10. Can we get one group of 100 then? You know, of the and then continuing on from there. Like that, that may not be the actual path there, but I'm just thinking about this in terms of like, if there were discrete levels here of being able to, to, to be able to impact, and there's two, different, there's two different ways of looking at it, both the total number of people, um, as well as the number of people who are engaged in, in the experience simultaneously, mm -hmm. right? Um, what, if, what if it was just right now without having to, because COVID, 
I'm look, I'm knocking on wood and all this. I'm like, COVID won't last in this same way yeah. forever. You know? Um, and there will be there will be a time when you can do in person again safely. Yeah. And others will come in there safely, right? When that happens, will you be in a position where you've done the work you have, the resources, you have the exercises, you have the, the recognition, you have all that such that you can actually it, it's like come in here and say like, look, we've been on lockdown. We've been in this, we've been, we've been out of the grip. So a global pandemic that's actually affected this, that's affected this country. And I'm not sure the way in which it affected Japan, but it, like, and now as we move forward, based on what I'm hearing, we have this opportunity. And this is like, we've had the testimonials from from the, the poppies that decided that they wanted to do it. Something that tells me that a tall poppy would like, based on your actual definition of this, they would be leaning in and saying, I would want to be a part of, a, of an online experience. It's just that the pe- most, of the, most of the things around me says, that's not the way that I should do it. Yeah. I'm, make, I'm making that up here, but it just, it, it, it feels to me that like, your tall, the people who are ready to lean into your tall poppies, because I feel like you're right now you're at your innovator and early adopter stage of this thing here, mm. right? Very much innovators, like like the people who are going to be like, I get it, it's online, but I've been I've been dying for this. Yeah, I've been waiting for this here, right? What if what if you're able to to actually just start molding something else and start figuring out some of the other components of this here? with a small group to begin with. Yeah, I like that. And actually I just wrote down, like as you were talking, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish this sentence. What? Yeah, yeah. It up. No, 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 take your time. Yeah, is running like 10 person online events. And I've also, I've started a Facebook, Facebook group too. Um, so I think providing content to that to build the community like free content to that might help as well there's something there's something i find that's like it's about like when you're coming to this kind of a movement element of this like it takes it there's stuff that take momentum you either have to have like there's resources it can be time money power like like whatever it is that can allow you to like get this out into, into the world the movement part though, the thing about a snowball, it can start from something very small, mm-hmm. right? And so there's so there's there's an element of me that, that just looks at this and says, this is this is about how do you get people to experience community together? And what does it mean to it? What does it mean for this group of people to experience community together? Yeah. How like how do they need to, how do they want to experience community with one another? And that to me is a big question to, to to make sure that you that you really get a chance to play with and see uh, and and can show as an example of what the positive benefits might be and start figuring out some of this. What is the value, both in their words and your world words? Facebook group sounds great, you know, from certain perspectives, but like at the end of the day, the real value add is can you create this community? Yeah. And it's a community, something that's online, like you get where you get where I'm coming from, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's why like I really wanted to do in person stuff to kind of start. Um, but yeah, it's looking like I'll be forced to to start online. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, there's also other stuff in the back of my mind of like, you know, my current because at the moment I'm teaching English to kind of for my visa and to pay the bills. So I kind of had it in my mind of like, and my contract for that runs up at the end of April. So I was like, okay, I want to get this to making a couple of thousand a month. Um, from events by the end of April so that I don't have to renew my contract. I can go and, and work for the the, guy, the other guy that I'm working with. He'll sponsor my visa and I'll run these events and focus on my coaching. And that will be what I focus on. Okay. Finish that out for me. So like, I know, I know we're coming up on our time. We're going to have to start mm. yeah. this conversation here. Um, do you have five more minutes? Yeah, yeah. Finish that. Finish that out. So, so like you, you have this goal. You're looking to bring in like because because we have to like we had even started this whole thing out like we will be like revenues on the mind, right? Yeah, How- yeah. I, I had a plan of like run two to three events in January, mm-hmm. then up that to four to eight events in February and March, then launch a membership, um, like membership tier, and then from there build it. Yeah. Okay. So, the question that comes to my mind here is like, it, it's, is what if 
what if it's even more, what if, what if we have more opportunity because of how it is, how yeah. it's set up right now? Like if we got out of the 10 steps into the future element of this here, right? Yeah. And just, and like, and, and just, and just started bringing them in for the experience. And you have, were your focus groups in person? Uh, well, yeah, the first one we had was, yeah, but there was a few people that couldn't come because their companies weren't allowing them to, to go out and stuff like that. Yeah. Got you, got you, got you. Have you had any other focus groups or is it just the one right now? No, we just had the one last week, um, but I'm wanting to set up another one, like an online version for the people that got you. Make the, yeah. Got you, got you. Okay. So, that, yeah, there's an element here of, of what where the scale might come or where, where the growth might come long term in person. Or are there things that might be available for you in, in this space? And maybe maybe you're working on just building community. Maybe there's another thing that you're working on during this time here. But I always want to see like what's the opportunity for you in this in this this realm as it is. Yeah. So let's do this here. Let's let's end the conversation at this this point here. There's more that we can bring up on this here. Uh, what's your biggest insight from this conversation thus far? I think, I think, yeah, I think that what you said about like, what is the opportunity in this? And it's funny because like, as a coach, I literally said this to my client, maybe a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> stuff like this. What's the opportunity in this like negativity or whatever? So I think, yeah, I think looking at it from that standpoint and like you said, like the, like doing something online. So I'm based in Osaka, but I've got, like, I've been making contacts in Tokyo um, and there, there's a few people up there that are interested in getting involved and stuff as well. So, yeah, it could, yeah, there could be more opportunity, I think, than maybe I was previously allowing myself to see yet. So let's go ahead and end the conversation. Let's end, let's end the conversation on that with, that, with that there. And it's really able to create for that one, ten, like that one experience with what you have right here. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Tamara. Like, um, I'm glad we had this conversation. Stay on the line. I wanted to talk a little bit more, more with you, but I think it's a good time to end this whole element all together. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to have to edit this later on because I can't. <laughs> So I'm like, I'm like, I, what, I know the last little bit there. I can hear all that. <laughs> you hear, right? I'm like, what is going on? It's like, it's hey, Oniyama here. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet. And then go ahead and leave one of your insights from today's video in the comments below. If you're looking to take this deeper, you can go and watch another video or you can go to niyama.com slash tribe to get exclusive invitation to our tribe member only events. I'll see you soon.